over here at the third skin right here the I the cake show and uh, I'm watching a video uh, with those headphones and it sounds like there's a helicopter above me and a car coming over right now I'm just gonna uh, try to put my right here with my stereo headphones uh, microphones maybe people can can actually put <laughs> headphones on and get this experience a little bit maybe not so hi yeah. so who are you hi my name is Simon Austin uh, I'm CTO at third skin um, and we want to put this virtual audio experience augmented audio experience um, into the real world so um, what Nicholas was just talking about was the fact that this video the helicopter that you mentioned isn't actually in this video anyway. It's a, so added a helicopter. it's a virtual object that can actually be added in real time to the environment. Um, yeah, so the helicopter is actually flying around here. Uh, credit where credit's due. This is a demo by a company called Superpowered Audio, yeah. who do um, who do a very very good. Oh, there you go. There's the plug. Um, who do an excellent 3D audio processing um, software. So. The idea is, is that we could use audio in an augmented fashion to put audio cues and data and that kind of stuff into the environment of your real hearing. The problem is with a traditional headphone is that they all designs block your natural hearing. So we had to come up with a design that allowed all of the natural sound to come through and be able to put digital audio on top of that. And this is what we came up with. So um, this is a combination of air and bone conduction. It uses a piezoelectric driver. Uh, if you put the microphones up against this box, you'll actually be able to hear it working. Uh, if you want to put them in contact with it, because it works better. Okay, should be able to hear it. Okay. Okay. So the, so the, so the little metal thing in there, essentially it's a V-shaped object that goes into the ear canal, presses against the ear canal walls, and then vibrates at sonic frequencies. Is it not like how regular bone conducting headphones work? It is, it is. Um, the problem <coughs> with regular bone conducting headphones is first of all they use, they try and do the whole sound spectrum um, with one driver. And it tends to be a very heavy uh, voice coil driver. This is because it's using piezoelectrics, it's much, much more lightweight for the same power uh, and the same force. And also we only do the low frequencies with the piezoelectrics. We still use a balanced armature driver to do the mid-range and the treble. And that way we can get a full spectrum audio, but also um, you know, maintain the quality. So, um, is the idea, let's say, that you walk around and you can hear something over there, like a virtual thing, a Absolutely. trigger, yeah. that, can, that, that does what? Well, a few potential examples. Um, so, like the one you just said, if we got, um, if you're navigating around a town that you've never been to before, you could just place an audio beacon that's GPS located that you just walk towards instead of having to follow, you know, turn left, turn right, walk down the street, cross the road, whatever. But there's loads of other applications. So we could do, for example, conference calling where the people in the conference call are actually located in space around you. And because we've put uh, an inertial measurement unit with gyroscopes and uh, compasses in the device. Is that the device? This is, is the, the device. device? This, this is, so the black parts are the um, uh, the the actual drivers themselves. Where did you put them? Uh, you put them into your ears. They go in the yeah. ear? So, so there's a model of the ear and they literally go as a, as a V shape just straight into the ear. They don't yeah. go any deeper than a cotton bud that you'd usually okay. use to clean your ears. All the batteries, Bluetooth radios, everything else sit behind your ears. Um, and so as I say, we've got like an inertial measurement unit. So it knows which direction your head's pointing. So we can actually move the sound source in real time around you. So it tracks your head movements. Oh. Is it with a gyro? Or yeah, with gyros. So this um, an accelerometer. Gyros, accelerometer, and magnetometer compass. Um, yeah, because we've got such big batteries in there. Well, you can wear these all day because they don't affect your hearing. So you have to have big batteries, and with big batteries, we get the chance to put in loads of sensors, loads of extra stuff. And because there's microphones in there, we can be talking to um, virtual assistants all the time. 
So this is basically like a wearable Amazon Echo. I think it would be awesome if you could combine this with a micro display, head mounted micro display company. We're working on it. I mean, no, we're not working on it. And that definitely isn't information that's in the public domain. Because that would be so cool because, okay, I'm looking over here, but you have the assistant on the left say, hey, come. Because actually what you're doing is you're going to a destination, but you have a guy in front of you. And maybe she's around the corner. Yeah, absolutely. Or maybe she's in front. And maybe you're looking in the wrong place. Or it might might not even be voice there might be uh, I've heard the phrase ear con like icon so an ear con being a sound that represents a certain thing so say in the facility we're in at the moment the facility itself could have curated content whereby it, there is a beacon where the toilet is there are beacons where the fire exits are that kind of stuff um, and yeah you could always hear those around you it wouldn't necessarily be voice they would just be sound effects that become familiar because that represents the thing that it represents behind three walls and up two flights of stairs. Because I think the smart glass are great to augment, but this, with the sound, your technology is going to augment it even more. Yeah. It's going to um, be I, an extra I'd augmented say, I'd generation. say that actually we can do immersive augmented reality better with this now than any of the visual guys can. The technologies, I mean, I've had the chance to play with some of the uh, industrial solutions and with HoloLens, for example, and the technology is very, very impressive. But we're still talking about very small, slightly headache inducing yeah, experiences. Yeah, confusing. Yeah, whereas when you first put that on, you, you were convinced that that helicopter was there. And if we were doing that in the real world, we could make these augmentations to reality as real as you want them to be. I think they definitely would benefit from your augmentation. Yeah. And let's say the the smart glass would mostly be off because it is confusing, but sometimes it appears something important. Yeah, sure. But the sound might be, uh, you know, For example, earlier. You're, you're hearing, you've got about a 15 degree resolution on where your hearing can actually determine the direction of a sound. Um, so maybe a visual marker is a better, yeah, better way to do that. The problem is, but not really a problem for us, is we can do it now and we're just waiting for the visual guys to catch up. They need to catch up. Yeah. How about, the, can you also have an algorithm to cancel noise around? Yeah, so um, obviously one of the big things that differentiates these from other headphones is, you know, good or not, um, that it doesn't block any sound at all and a lot of people say, you know, But if you headphones. want, you can just flip. We've got we've got an active noise cancellation solution in here that listens to the outside world and tries to cancel it out using the drivers uh, it's not our solution uh, it's it's a well tested uh, industry standard chip that a lot of people are using uh, we think we can get down to about a 30 decibel reduction in certain frequency bands um, but certainly enough to turn a conversation in a loud room into a nicely focused conversation between two people with the rest of the room dialed down so what is the third skin uh, so name? third skin is the name of the company the product I should probably have said very early on is hi 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 h h y um, the, uh, the elusive triple entendre. Um, it's, uh, in the company's third skin, the idea being that the clothes that you wear should fit you like a second skin. The technology you wear should fit you like a third. It should be seamless and well integrated into your sensory experience. So you, you imagine a world where like everybody's using your technology? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is this is the first iteration of the first product that we've developed. We've got um, we've got ideas in the pipeline for an ecosystem of various wearable computing devices that should should be totally natural to wear and eventually eliminate our reliance on holding a five inch piece of glass in our hand to get all of our information through yeah and yeah that's that's the ambition it's like your watch right is that a pebble it is a pebble like me it's a pebble. R I P. Yeah. yeah greatest wearable ever created did it's everything still, it needed to available. and nothing more i got mine on gumtree it's still available okay still available on gumtree yeah, yeah. But, uh, so it's right here the um uh, where do you, where was this where we see the helicopter oh uh, well, is that your your design your, your technology no it's not as as previously mentioned that's a, that's a demo from from another company uh, but the the, the the underlying the underlying uh, algorithms uh, what are called HRTF so head related transfer functions which is how you take a 
a mono sound and a position and convert it into a stereo sound that gives your brain all the cues it needs to work out where that sound is coming from. That's, that's a well-established technology uh, that is getting progressively better and better uh, and can be done in real time. All right. And, cool. and this, how soon? How soon? Okay, so available to pre-order on Indiegogo right oh, now? Yeah. yeah. Indiegogo. Sorry? Uh, so how's it going? Um, the Indiegogo campaign went really well. Uh, it actually completed last year uh, and um, yeah, we've been doing R&D since then. We're, we've had the usual delays that hardware startups have, but we're planning to ship in Q4 this year. So how many people on Indiegogo? Uh, 600. 600 orders? Yeah, 600 orders. So, you know, we've got... We've, You're totally successful. We think yeah. totally successful. Yeah. So how soon do you hope that it's ready? About Q4 this year. Q4. Shipping. Yeah. So. And yeah. how much was it before the Christmas? On, on um, I honestly can't remember. It's been a while. But it was affordable, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is mid-range headphone prices. And the retail price, how much? Um, somewhere between 200 and 250 euro, but we haven't completely nailed that down yet. All right. Okay. And uh, s s making headphones is also important to have a lot of, uh, uh, like, you, it's a high precision industry, right? Or something, what's yeah. called, it's, uh, it's high tech. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, but you, so maybe you, you get the right partnerships or something in the Absolutely. manufacturing. Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're standing that. on the shoulders of the giants with all of the stuff that's in here, with the exception of the driver that we've got and that we've put together. Uh, everything else is off the shelf. We're just putting it together in a new way. And it's not like these things weren't possible before. <laughs> it's just there wasn't really any point doing it before. If you can't wear the headphones all day, then why bother putting in all the sensors and all the other cool stuff? Um, so we managed just to enable this, this what we hope is a, is a next step. And where are you based? Uh, all over the UK. Um, we have no fixed abode, but uh, I'm based in the Midlands. My uh, Co-founder Joao is in uh, Brighton. We've got engineers in London. Um, yeah, uh, we are a virtual company at the moment. Cool.